No matter what life you lead, the Virgin is a lovely number. Cheeks as fragile as cigarette paper, arms and legs made of limos, lips like Vindurone, rolling her china blue doll eyes, open and close. Open to say, good day, mama, and shut for the thrust of the unicorn. She is unsoiled. She is as white as a bonefish. Hello everybody, the poem that I will be performing today is a poem written by Anne Sexton and it is a uh, fantasy story that she wrote in her own version that is uh, familiar to um, most people and she wrote it during the era of the sexual revolution and her original intent was to inform, uh, perhaps remind the reader of how women were looked down upon and how society was used to seeing women uh, weaker than men. So uh, presenting Anne Sexton's poem, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Once there was a lovely virgin called Snow White. Say she was 13, her stepmother a beauty in her own right, though eaten of course by age, would hear of no beauty surpassing her own. Beauty is a simple passion, but oh my friends, in the end, you will dance the fire dance in iron shoes. The stepmother had a mirror to which she referred something like the weather forecast, a mirror that proclaimed the beauty of the land. She would ask, looking glass upon the wall, who is the fairest of us all? And the mirror would reply, You are the fairest of us all. Pride pumped in her like poison. Suddenly one day the mirror replied, Queen, you are full fair, tis true. But Snow White is fairer than you. Until that moment, Snow White had been no more important than a dust mouse under the bed. But now the queen saw brown spots on her hands and four whiskers over her lips. So she condemned Snow White to be hacked to death. Bring me her heart, she said to the hunter, and I will salt it and I will eat it. The hunter, however, let his prisoner go and brought a boar's heart back to the castle. The queen chewed it up like a cube steak. Now I am the fairest, she said, lapping her slim white fingers. Snow White walked in the wildwood for weeks and weeks. At each turn, there were 20 doorways. At each stood a hungry wolf, his tongue lolling out like a worm. The birds called out lewdly, talking like pink parrots and the snakes hung down in loops, each a noose for her sweet white neck. On the seventh week, she came to the seventh mountain, and there she found the dwarf house. It was as droll as a honeymoon cottage and completely equipped with seven beds, seven chairs, seven forks, and seven chamber pots. Snow White ate seven chicken livers and lay down at last to sleep. The dwarves, those little hot dogs, walked three times around Snow White, the sleeping virgin. They were wise and waddled like small czars. Yes, it's good amen, they said, and will bring us luck. They stood on tiptoes to watch. Snow White, wake up. She told them about the mare and the killer queen, and they asked her to stay and keep house. Beware of your stepmother, they said. Soon she will know you are here. While we are away in the mines, during the day you must not open the door. Looking glass upon the wall, the mare told. And so the queen dressed herself in rags and went out like a peddler to traps 
Snow White. She went across seven mountains. She came to the dwarf house and Snow White opened the door and she bought a bit of lacing. The queen fastened it tightly around her bodice as tight as an ace bandage. So tight that Snow White swooned. She lay on the floor, a plucked daisy. When the dwarfs came home, they undid the lace and she revived miraculously. She was as full of life as soda pop. Beware of your stepmother, they said. She will try once more. Looking glass upon the wall once more, the mayor told. And once more, the queen dressed in rags. And once more, Snow White opened the door. This time, she bought a poison comb, a curved eight-inch scorpion, and put it in her hair and swooned again. The doors returned and took out the comb and she revived miraculously. She opened her eyes as wide as Orphan Annie. Beware, beware, they said, but the mirror told. The queen came, Snow White the dumb bunny, opened the door and she bit into a poison apple and fell down for the final time. When the doors returned, they undid her bodice. They looked for a comb, but it did no good. Though they washed her with wine and rubbed her with butter, it was to no avail. She lay as still as a gold piece. The seven dwarfs could not bring themselves to bury her in the black ground. So they made a glass coffin and set it up upon the seventh mountain so that all who passed by could peek in and admire her beauty. A prince came one June day and would not budge. He stayed so long his hair turned green and still he would not leave. The dwarfs took pity upon him and gave him the glass snow white. Its doll eyes shut forever. To keep in his far off castle as the prince men carried the coffin, they stumbled and dropped it and the chunk of apple flew out of her throat and she woke up miraculously. And thus Snow White became the prince bride. The wicked queen was invited to the wedding feast and when she arrived there were red hot iron shoes. In the manner of red hot roller skates clamped upon her feet. First your toes will smoke, and then your heels will turn black, and you will try upward like a frog. She was told. And so she danced until she was dead, a subterranean figure, her tongue flicking in and out like a gas jet. Meanwhile, Snow White held court rolling her china blue doll eyes open and shut, and sometimes referring to her mirror as women do. Thank you for watching. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Anne Sexton, Snow White, and the Seven Dwarfs. Thank you.